I am going to just share with you um, a little bit more about because because we, we sent you the web link and asked you to, to join us on Facebook. And I know um, I see a few, my phone is beside me, there's a few hashtags happening and my phone is buzzing. But um, so uh, Cus Cus, it's backing entrepreneurial initiatives in the culinary sector. But what it's doing is that it's doing that with the influence of global entrepreneurship and global food, I suppose, global cuisine. And um, we started this two years ago, or actually a little bit over two years, because we had to get an extension to the project because of COVID. As I said, we were all meant to be in Leitrim for a training week um, with our colleagues from um, the partner countries. Um, but what I suppose what it is, is that um, it's, it's using the world cuisine as the basis for developing entrepreneurial um, uh, professional skills and, and a business. And what we're hoping to do is that we're going to attract adult learners who might not have otherwise participated because you know yes there are start your own food business courses out there and you know many other large longer programs but I suppose we're trying to do it on a really practical basis through things like encouraging people from like a global kitchen to go to Berlin and see what what it is there and I suppose the resources are designed to be used outside the traditional so outside the Leos but helping you know that people will eventually go to Leo and be equipped to, um, you know, start their own food business. But, and again, what we were trying to do is, is use that, that cultural heritage piece of food as the basis. So I suppose that's why we've picked our, our speakers today, our three case studies, Pascal and Sinead, they've used, you know, the Irish traditional soda bread and, and, and um, stout bread as the basis of their product. Sham has used, you know, Asian influences in his sauce range and Mabel also on her journey to to, to um, get the, you know, uh, use a, her traditional and uh, that secret sauce. And, and so interesting today that um, most people mentioned their mothers, our three guest speakers mentioned their mothers and, and mother's recipes and Sham was ringing his mother and his grandmother looking for recipes. This is beautiful because this is, is, is heritage on a plate. And to me, this is just magic. Um, sorry. So we have four parts. Couscousproject.eu is the home of all our materials. And there are four elements to it. The Cus Kitchen, Cus Pro, Cus Market and Cus Alliances. I'm very quickly going to bring you through it. So the Cus Kitchen, um, I suppose, opens up um, learning opportunities. Of, it's a whole set of resources um, that helps our learners to explore local food products. We have loads of um, case studies and examples there, the geography of, of the project. So not only do you see Ireland and Leitrim, you can see, um, you know, Bordeaux in France and, and um, you know, Mora in Portugal and Berlin in, in um, Germany. And just the influence, I suppose, of, of how new cultures um, have brought, um, you know, a, a perspective to it. So in there, you can learn about food labels and quality marks. So as Mabel said, it's one place to find it how to manage food waste, very practical. And this was really always championing local food as part of it um, and, and, and a seasonal approach and a very holistic, authentic way of, of doing your business. Um, the Cus Pro is, I suppose, is where, where the business parts are. Um, so we're helping entrepreneurs to make progress in designing that food business. So the modules are, are there to, I suppose, help prepare for market launch. Um, We've been very careful to use very simple language because English may not be the first um, first language of, of, of our learners. Um, these materials are available to all the educators to use absolutely freely. You can download them and use them in your own classrooms. Um, and it's, I suppose, making it um, really, I suppose, um, accessible for people that, that entrepreneurship and setting up a small business, even as a lifestyle entrepreneur, can be really ach achievable. The marketing and sales part, as I mentioned a few times today, particularly tough sometimes. And I've loved that we've heard today from people that have used farmers markets, street food opportunities and, you know, online sales because food has changed. So there's much more um, easy easier ways to get to market. So actually Momentum was responsible for creating this downloadable toolbox that will help you bring your product to market. And we've used so many um, wonderful case studies from across Ireland um, of all types of ways. So, you know, home delivery, 
um, and and pop up opportunities and, and and lots of other ways. So that's all 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 there for for download. And finally, we um, set up a Couscous Alliances, um, and this was really interesting in that we used um, I suppose we, we connected with projects such as Taste Leitrim, um, and we helped and got involved in celebrating local gastronomy and helping you know, I suppose, uh, bring a product to the fore. So for Leitrim, that obviously had to be Boxty. So we were helping in the first running Ireland's first Boxty festival. Um, and um, that alliance is for educators and entrepreneurs and to come together and, you know, help create a community was also mentioned today. So those resources are all online. They're absolutely free. The web it's available in by four languages um, and I suppose it, for, for us part of it has, has just begun so please just be aware of it and share it with anybody that you know that would benefit from from those resources.